Mindfulness is the practice of being present, of being aware of what is going on and what is there around you in an open, non-judgmental and a curious way. So mindfulness is a unique, wonderful way of experiencing the world, but it does have some risks. There are some problems with it in certain circumstances. For example, in times of extreme stress, such as war, unemployment, depression, and so on, we can get stuck in very bad negative cycles of despair. And a passive acceptance of our current situation can keep us stuck in these cycles. It can make it hard to break out of, which is why sometimes mindfulness isn't always what we need. Another problem for the amateur practitioner of mindfulness is something called the mindfulness paradox. There are two premises here. The first is that mindfulness requires mental energy to practice. I think this is only a problem for the amateur practitioner as someone who's been practicing for 10, 20, 30 years, it's second nature, mindfulness. It doesn't require extra additional energy. So this is only a problem for the the more amateur practitioner of mindfulness. The second premise, which has been proven in studies, is that mindfulness is an effective way of reducing stress, mental stress and fatigue. But where does the problem come in then? The paradox then is that mindfulness should become unhelpful in precisely the situations when it is most needed. If a person feels mental fatigue, her mindfulness levels will subsequently drop, leaving her unable to then utilize mindfulness as a means to reduce fatigue. So when we need most to be mindful, we can't, we don't have the mental capacity to practice mindfulness. In these situations, there is something more important, something that can help us out of bad situations, and this is hope or hopefulness. Cultivating hope means to be forward thinking, to set realistic goals and future plans, and just to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Defined by JP Day as a wish for a better future and a belief in the probability that it can come true. A historical example of the importance of hope in dire situations is in Viktor Frankl's classic book, Man's Search for Meaning, about the prisoner's experience in concentration camps during World War II. For example, he states that any attempt to restore a man's inner strength in the camp had first to succeed in showing him some future goal. Like Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Moreover, a man's courage and hope, or lack of them, greatly affects the immunity of his body, and that a sudden loss of hope and courage can have a deadly effect. The reason for many of the prisoners' deaths was them giving up hope. Our answer to the question of life must consist not in talk and meditation, but in right action and in right conduct. A less extreme but still applicable example of the importance of hope over mindfulness was the unemployment experienced during the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. A recent paper evaluated how effective mindfulness and hopefulness were in helping people through times of stress and adversity. The study found that a hopeful mindset is more likely to yield a range of positive outcomes related to work-based resilience and stress than mindfulness is. The problem with mindfulness was that there is a risk of it inhibiting their sense of agency, dissuading them from making plans to get out of a bad situation. Hope is useful in such situations because it is metacognitive, so it concerns thinking about one's thinking, thinking about one's thought patterns, evaluating them, seeing what needs to change, and ultimately helping them see a way out of any bad situation. A risk with mindfulness is that by diminishing emotionality, mindfulness can interfere with the effective control component of metacognition, which serves to signal how individuals are progressing towards their goals. This is something that I have noticed due to maybe not practicing mindfulness very well or not combining it with future planning as much as I could have. In that sometimes, especially in the past, I felt like a lack of drive to invest in my career or invest in projects that I've got going or working towards any future goals. I just felt this lack of drive. 
and more recently I've learned from experience the importance of really building up from the basics so like in Maslow's hierarchy of needs you start with the foundational things before you get too wrapped up in ideas of self-actualization and self-transcendence so a lot more of my time now is invested in relationships or in career and it's made a much bigger effect than just purely focusing on on mindfulness and assuming that that will solve all of my problems. Now there are still risks to hopefulness. If we do it naively we become too stuck in the future and we neglect our current experience. So perhaps we neglect our health or happiness or maybe we just forget to be grateful for what we do currently have. But I think one of the best approaches backed up by research and from personal experience is that the best course of action is goal setting with mindful action. So combining the two. When times are good, investing more in the practice of mindfulness and gratitude. And when times are bad, recognizing the importance of cultivating hopefulness and being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel to help you push through any bad times. Although I still think during this time it's important to retain some sense of mindfulness and gratitude of one's current situation. Mindfulness is an incredible thing. Uh, It's a beautiful way to see the world, but it's important to recognize that in some circumstances, particularly times of stress, another perspective is needed, namely hopefulness. And this is something that can help us out of a bad situation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video useful and you liked the slightly new video setup. Um, leave any comments about any future video suggestions or advice that you may have, anything you'd like to see in the future. And yeah, thank you again. I appreciate everyone that's watched. And yes, I will see you soon. Thank you again for watching and goodbye.